here's a thought. Why centralize your project data, regardless of what project it might be related to, versus the old way of doing things on a project by project basis? Let's think about that. So when I first started out in project management, as part of my training, I was led into my 2B office. And in the back of that office, there was a credenza. And in that credenza was a series of file folders, each one with a lapel labeled with a project name. And whenever a new contract, new RFIs, anything related to a given project came into my desk, I simply filed it away in the physical folder. Well, that old way of doing thing relates directly to how we do things in the digital world, but not quite in the way you would first think. You see, one frustration I always come across whenever working in the digital world on a physical job is people don't know where in the world on the server or in their email or where something's stored. When we get into Notion, one key ability that it grants us is this hub, spoke, and wheel configuration in that we can store data in a central location and people selectively of their own variety can pick how their portion of the wheel spokes into that data and how they view, retrieve, and input data. But it all goes to the same central point. So in this video, we're going to expand on our databases and view how we can link things together from that outside wheel down and into that central hub. Here we are back in Notion once again, and in our last session together, we covered notes, decisions, and observations in an initial setup of that database. Take a quick glance and review. We covered initial entries and types of things that may go into the database, as well as project tags, and the people, be it the creator or collaborators, that are involved in these entries, as well as the time that they were created. Let's print this up a little bit while I'm thinking of it and go ahead and add an icon. This is a database that's somewhat central, so we'll just go ahead and select this database icon. Then we'll jump back to our landing page and go and check off the things we successfully completed last time. But let's go ahead and add some things to the list while we're here. Namely, in our Notes, Decisions, and Observations database, we're going to add a new field called Entry Types. More on that later. But the primary focus of this video will be on this projects database. And our key takeaways today are going to be the creation of, again, people fields, as well as our first use of the status field. And then we'll take a slight dive into synced views. Right, so to do that, we're going to go ahead and come down here and set up our second of the three databases. Again, this database is going to be set up as a full page because more often than not you're going to interact with it via various views and not directly. I'm just going to call it something simple like projects and we're going to add some iconography to it, namely a target. I'm also going to change this entry field from the word by default name to the word project and again alter the iconography. That way whenever I see a target symbol, no matter where it's at in the system, I know I'm talking about a project. We're going to get rid of this tags property. Not going to use that. Then we are going to go ahead and add our first people field. This one we're going to use the person field. But in the words of the great Carol Shelby, you can't win a race by committee. You need one man in charge. That man, in this case, is going to be a manager. And that person's going to be singular. But you do need teammates along the way. Consultants, architects, engineers, site attendants. So we're going to add a second person field and call that collaborators. And populate on its own default. Then our next instance is going to be the use, uh, our first time use, that is, of the status field. I pop that open. And by default, Notion has three statuses, not started, in progress, done, and they fall into three categories, to do, in progress, and complete. Well, in the construction world, not started is pretty much a dirty word, so we're just going to call that pending for now. In progress is fine with me, but I am OCD, 
So we're going to add a capital P to board progress. And then done for the heck of it, why not just call that complete. Now you can and we will later on go back and add some additional statuses. But one key thing is that the more you add varieties of fields, the more disorganized your views of databases could be due to filters or different views. So for now, we're just going to leave these three simple defaults in place. So now that we have statuses set up, let's go ahead and recall our project names. We had one active project called Acme Warehouse and one other project called Wally World Water Park. Now we'll get rid of this blank third entry that appears by default. Then let's go ahead and open up Acme Warehouse. It'll pop open here inside view, but we're going to expand it to full screen view. And then we're even going to make it a little bit wider to give ourselves some room to work. And then just like when we saw our first note entry, you end up with this blank void at the bottom of the entry. We're going to go ahead and click into that, hit forward slash, and type the word database again. But this time, unlike the past two times, we're not going to select database full page. Instead, we're going to scroll down and select linked view of a database. Doing so will bring up this blank database, but off to the side, you can select a data source. We're going to select, again, remember this icon, our notes, decisions, and observations database. Doing so is going to bring up a linked view. You know you have a linked view. Right, so an observation about this linked view database. It's important to note that anything you do, say, change the title of a document, change the contents of an entry, or change a property field, relates one-to-one -one with the same entry in the central database. The two are congruent, as is any other view of the same data in another linked view. So it's important to remember that what you do in the linked view takes effect in any other views of that same data. So edit carefully.
Well, I hope you're learning a bit, but know there's plenty more to come. If you have any questions at this point, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Come back next time and we'll check off a few more items on our to-do list, as well as set up our third and final central database. Thanks for joining me.